Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro competitively oriented uh, duel video. Basically, this is going to be me testing Evil Live versus Salomon Great over a larger sample size of games. Now, I've had videos go on the channel where I've been playing against Salomon Great. Uh, I played against a lot of Salomon Greats on my uh, live stream, where I was live streaming Evil Eye gameplay on Dueling Book when the deck had just gone live, when Infinity Chasers had just released and had just gone live on Dueling Book in the rated section. But now that we actually have people that know how to play against this deck in the form of Salomon Great players, I wanted to play against some of those people and see how this deck managed to stack up against Salomon Great, against somebody that knew at least a large portion of what he needs to know to play against this deck and what sort of interactions he needs to be looking out for. So, before we get too deep into the video, if you're new here, I'd like to ask you to hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, be sure to leave a like and maybe comment down below with some thoughts and suggestions. If you like this sort of stuff, definitely let me know. Uh, and if you have any suggestions for future videos of uh, future matchups and stuff, then definitely leave them down below. I would love to possibly play them if they are semi-relevant decks because I like messing with rogue decks right around now. Like, I really have a, a rogue bug that's uh, that's been uh, biting its way into me, and I've been really enjoying decks like this. Uh, specifically because this deck feels like it's a lot more rewarding to play than any of the other control decks right now, specifically Guru Control and True Draco, because of the fact that Surzeal, while it does operate a bit like Guru, and the fact that like Guru gets Fiendus, so that's an interruption that Guru itself generated, uh, Surzeal searching Selene, but then just sticking on the board, being a big hard to remove body that also has a bit of give and take about it of it just takes a card away from your opponent but then it also forces you to you know pop one of your own cards as a uh, compensating factor is actually just really really interesting it's really intricate uh, with how this sort of plays out popping things like scythe during your opponent's standby phase to summon it out of your spell and trap card zone um, popping things like there can only be one which is something that comes up a lot uh, you could pop your own floodgates just so that you have the ability to summon other copies of Serzio or things like Medusa and just go in for a little bit more board control when the floodgate is, you know, completely exhausted its uh, optimal use. Or if you have another one you want to flip, uh, you could do things like, you know, trigger Serzio in the standby phase and then flip Artifact Sanctum and then still destroy the Sanctum, but the Sanctum resolves for Scythe. There's a lot of little intricate details about how this deck can play out that make it really rewarding to play. Uh, a lot more rewarding, I said, than uh, like Guru Control or anything like that, where those decks feel very simple. Uh, whereas this one, you're playing it in this sort of way that, uh, that you really have to be mindful of where all of your cards are and what you're going to be using them for at any given time. So it's very interesting to me, at least I think so. Anyway, like I said, I could talk about this deck for a long time, so I'm just going to sit back and jump into some gameplay now. Hope you guys enjoy, and like I said, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But anyway, gameplay time. All right, so going into the first game, I get to start because I won Rock, Paper, Scissors, and my hand is very nice and very well-rounded. Field spell plus some traps, one being there can only be one. Uh, but unfortunately, Sergio gets hit by Ghost Ogre. My opponent does not have that strong of a hand to capitalize on it, but still, I am playing into a Ghost Ogre and a Veiler. But I do have the Solemn Strike for the Effect Veiler to force my Sergio through. But So Ghost Ogre is a very strong hand trap against Evil Eye, in case you haven't been able to tell. Because if you Veiler the Sergio, then your opponent could still have, you know, Evil Eye of that they just hard drew. They could also have any other of the Evil Eye uh, spell and traps, specifically Defeat and Retribution, that require an Evil Eye to be on the field to use them. And they can, you know, play with those. But if you Ghost Ogre the Surzeal, then it removes it from the field, meaning that the search goes through, but there's nothing on the board to capitalize on, and it really hurts the momentum of the deck trying to build. But so. Once this deck does get into its little slot in the game of either flipping a Floodgate or just being able to control the board well enough because of cards like Defeat being as good as they are and, you know, Hand Traps being so readily accessible for this deck, especially cards like Cherries because you're rarely ever going to have more than one monster on the field, uh, you're able to just control the game state in a very nice and flowing way and just build, 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 build momentum in your favor. Well, I guess not really momentum, but just like positive game state environments for you and negative game state environments for your opponent but so i actually punted a uh, game here we're well, not really punted uh, just sort of scuffed it if i had activated the field spell before going to battle phase uh the Surzeal would have been big enough to 
do that last hundred damage. Uh, I just didn't do the math right in my head when I uh, started doing things, but it's fine because I'm basically playing really well with what I have uh, my access to on the board. I popped a scythe out of my spell and trap card zone with Serzial uh, earlier in the game and summoned it, locked him out with scythe, even though there can only be one was already on the field, it was extra lockdown. And then I popped the scythe that was in my monster zone with Serzial on the uh, pre uh, on a following turn, and then flipped a sanctum that I had drawn to get the second scythe out of my deck because my deck is playing multiple scythes. Unlike my opponents, where you saw he opened Sanctum Scythe, and the Sanctum already is very minimal impact in this matchup because all it does is summon Scythe as a beater, but it was something that he couldn't even activate. And then he also had Phantasme in his hand, which is also just not good in the matchup because I never go into the extra deck. But so, going into the next game, he gets to start, doesn't have an optimal hand to either open two of his one ofs and Phantasme again, so I get a much better opening by comparison with Pot of Extravagance into a Serzial with a bunch of traps to set, and this is what I was talking about earlier. Even though he Valored my Serzial, I still drew Evil Eye Defeat, which means that I'm capable of using that to bounce and be a reactive card, whereas if he had Ghost Ogred my Serzial, that Evil Eye Defeat would not be live. But so, I'm not really too strong on momentum here, but my opponent isn't doing anything either. I'm able to put Scythe on the board as a beater and then stun him out for another turn. Draw duality, reveal the field spell, get the field spell, and from here the game is just very heavily in my favor. He's got that dead Phantasme in hand. Uh, there's not really much that he can do, especially considering the amount of cards I have to play with. On top of me popping a scythe out of my spell and trap card zone to summon and be another body on the board. So I'm not floodgating him with there can only be one intangible floodgates like, you know, pink cards, flipping pink cards, but I am summoning scythes, which in essence is a bit worse for him because. I am actually summoning things with attack points that are telling him he can't play his turn, and so Scythe is pretty uh, like oppressive in that regard. But so able to just swing, swing, get some quick game shots in with the big beefy 4100 Serzial, and basically move on to the next game. But so next game, my opponent is going first. Starts with Foxy, goes into Balanx, has a very very good hand in the form of being able to Foxy discard Spinny uh, and go into Stalio and do his plays and I don't have a hand trap to follow up with um, so he's just going into sunlight wolf and getting back roar uh, and doing all that sort of good stuff now we were talking to each other when we were playing these games um, and even though roar was his only interruption he felt like he had to roar that because like you you just can't let me get two free cards uh, you just have to like put me on not having cards to uh, to compete with <laughs> at that point and his board is large enough that you would think that he'd get to you know be good for the rest of the game but unfortunately I have there can only be one which I got off pot of duality if I'm remembering correctly and there can only be one is a really strong floodgate in the essence of the same thing as rivalry and goes in where it clears your opponent's board if they don't have a way to out it on activation so like I don't really need to do anything to his field other than kill the Sunlight Wolf that was Reincarnation Link summoned using its own name because that adds back cards for free and he's obviously going to keep that one. So I just clear that off the board and then flip there can only be one. And so then from here the game is just very heavily in my favor. And I'm setting my Medusa because I don't want to pop any other cards on my field, but the next time my Serzial pops a card it's going to be popping the field spell which will add back the Medusa that got popped on the previous turn. So. It's sort of just moving cards around to get better pops off of the Serzio because I don't have anything like Scythe or um, anything that's beneficial to pop. Uh, but going forward, like it's just you just have to be smart. You have to be smart with your interactions. My opponent finally getting to a Twin Twister to out my There Can Only Be One, but then I just flip Scythe, uh, Sanctum for Scythe rather, and he's not really able to do anything other than try to wall up with Falco and Spinny, which. I mean, at this point, the game is very, very much over because I have so many cards on him. My Selene comes back. My Serzial uh, is b getting another copy summoned. I'm summoning another Serzial because he outed that there can only be one. So now I'm putting more pressure on him. And so it's sort of a double-edged sword where this deck flips there can only be one as the best floodgate against Salamangrate, and the Salamangrate player has to out that. But then if they out it, then it means that more Serzials and cards like Medusa are coming down as well, which means that, like, advantage could easily just start snowballing back in my favor. At least when there can only be one is on the field, you're only going to be dealing with one normal summoned Serzial, and that means that there's going to be no more Serzials being summoned to get plus ones turn after turn after turn, because this deck does access its Serzials pretty easily. And it also means that while there can only be one is on the field, 
drawing the field spell is essentially a dead card, uh, because, sure, you'll add a Surzeal or a Medusa to your hand, but you can't summon it because there can only be one is on the field. So it's sort of really strange where your opponent has to out this card, but in the process of them outing the card, it makes your game plan stronger because you're able to follow up with, you know, a Medusa, maybe equip a Selene onto that. Uh, and then it just means that things get a little bit out of control in a different way. Um, but so, Defeat here, Bouncing Two Monsters. I love Evil Eye Defeat. Evil Eye Defeat is like my favorite card in the archetype uh, because of the fact that, again, it's another one of those cards that you can access going second. You can set it into a board specifically against like Salomon Great because their boards are so fair. And then you can just flip it, and if Selene is on the field, you're bouncing two monsters. And so, like, it's really strong going first, and it's really, uh, like, you know, competent as removal going second. Because then you're able to also control the board with Surzeals and stuff. But so, next game, my opponent starts because he uh, it just wants to start. I mean, it, I hear it's a nice thing to do. Uh, I cherries his Sunlight Wolves uh, after he goes for a Stalio Summon, um, just to to commit as many cards into his play as possible. Uh, but he goes into a Heat Leo, he has a will he's able to, you know, get more cards off of uh, and just make a bigger board and go from there. So he uses Rage in a really good position here. If you, again, if you like using Ogre on Surzeal is really good because it removes it from the board. But using Rage when I try to equip the Selene to the Surzeal means that the Surzeal leaves the board before the Selene got to equip, meaning that Selene and Surzeal both get outed by Rage. Um, and it just becomes uh, pretty problematic. But from here, I basically, even though I cherries the Sunlight Wolf, he still has enough stuff to go for game. I summon Scythe uh, and use its effect to lock him out from going to Heat Leo and spinning my other card. But uh, he ogres my Scythe, so I have to burn uh, 1500 off of uh, Strike. And that's basically just game over, man, because my life is too low to do anything. So as you can see, this deck. Uh, this deck's weakness is just when your normal summoned monster is not allowed to stay on the field. Uh, you need to have your Surzeal stick with Selene. Well, not even with Selene. You just need to have your Surzeal stick. Because even if you don't have Selene equipped to Surzeal, you can still utilize other cards. Um, but obviously, having Selene equipped to Surzeal makes the game progress a lot faster into your favor. But so, my opponent tried to Twin Twister. I flip a Retribution, which I believe I searched. Um, so I don't have any floodgates this game, I just have copies of Defeat, Retribution, and a Strike. And so I'm able to play out this turn in a very interesting way of flipping Defeat to bounce two of his uh, Salaman Great Monsters, and then when he Lady Debugs into Baylinx, I just Surzeal pop it, and now all of his effects have been soaked up and he can't summon it anymore. Uh, it's one of those things, it was, it was very calculated, I didn't think he had a will in his hand, um, uh, based off how he was playing, so I just did the play in that way. And then I just get rewarded by, uh, top decking, uh, Extravagance. And then drawing two, there can only be once. And so, like, uh, the game was already, like, in my favor because I feel like he doesn't have will in his hand, so even if I didn't draw the there can only be ones, I was just going to defeat his first summon next turn and put it back in his hand so that he couldn't continue to play. Uh, but I drew there can only be one, so that just meant it was better off in my favor. And he tried to suicide his Foxy to summon Gazelle from his hand to send Falco from deck to set Rage, as I believe the play he was talking out to me, and he was like, it didn't let me activate Gazelle, and I'm like, mate, it says except during damage step on the card, and he was like, oh my god, I have been getting cheated. Uh, but anyway, that's a little bit of table talk that we went through. Uh, he just suicided his Foxy there because he thought I could summon Gazelle and send with its effect, but it was damage step, and uh, it says no damage step on the card. Weird. But so, going second this game, again, Ghost Ogre, incredibly strong. Uh, it forces you basically into only getting the field spell, and then I have to use Repose uh, to just try and draw another card to try and allow myself to play. But so, my opponent's board, still pretty strong, even though I cherished his Sunlight Wolves. I'm able to go Sanctum for Scythe. Uh, I'm Ashing his Gazelle because I know he has Rage in Grave, so I don't want him to just get a free fa uh, Falco send to set Rage. But he has Circle, which he's able to use to get the Falco, and then discard it for Foxy anyway, and then... Now he's set up a good little uh, a good little loop against me where he's going to be using Rage to pop his Falco or to send his Falco and pop my Surzeal every time I try to equip Selene and then Falco will trigger to reset Rage and then during his turn he'll use Will to bring back Falco. So he's just able to outgrind me with that interaction because now his Rage is essentially free for a couple of turns until he's just capable of going into and a completely open play after clearing my back row, which he's doing now, which is going into Update Jammer and a Transcode Talker, 
plus all of his monsters that are still on the board. So this is like super game because that transcode gets to attack twice. And update jammer plus the two transcodes was already 81. I have the scythe on the board, but all this extra stuff on the field means that my life points are not surviving that turn. So, very interesting game. Uh, even when you cherries the Sunlight Wolf, like depending on what their hand is, they literally just can continue. And so, as you can see, this deck's weakness is just being you know shown of like... You have to have Serzial Resolve, you have to have it stay there, and you have to be able to, you know, just draw a nice, you know, well-meshing hand. Because, like, even if you look at this hand, it was double uh, Extravagance, double Serzial, where those cards kind of needed to be something else. <laughs> because I don't really have a lot going for me here. I'm able to defeat for one, but my Ser because my Serzial got Valored, so I don't have Selene, so I can't defeat for two. And now... Uh, that I've uh, cherries the Sunlight Wolf again after, you know, soaking up all those resources. His board ends really weak, but he already has Rage and Roar to uh, sort of contest what I'm going to be trying to do. But so, yeah, he just gets to go Rage, discarding Falco, and, uh, like, the Selene will reset itself, so it kind of worked out in my favor here a little bit, uh, but it's still, like, he has a Rage set that I know about, and the only card in my hand that I could do anything with is Ash Blossom. I opened, you know, just too many, uh, like, engine pieces and not enough disruption. And that's sort of where this deck's weakness lies, is that, like, you can open too many Serzials and too many copies of the Field Spell and stuff like that, and not enough copies of other cards that allow you to play the game uh, in form of uh, disruption options for your opponent. Like, the more disruption options, you, the more disruption options that you have, if I can speak clearly give you a more well-rounded gameplay um, spectrum of what you're able to use Serzial on. You're able to hold Serzial. Your opponents expect you to use Serzial in certain points, but if you have other cards, you're able to throw them off of their game and how they were expecting the, uh, the turn structures to go. But so, if you open hands that are clumped with a bunch of the same cards, especially multiple copies of, like, Indulgence, or, excuse me, Extravagance, where, uh, where the card literally cannot be played until the next turn, and then you open multiple normal summons in the form of multiple Serzials, um, or multiple field spells, then it just sort of starts making things a little weird. And at that point, you sort of need a card like Sanctum, or there can only be one, to compensate for the fact that you're having uh, less cards in your hand that are playable uh, overall. <laughs> but so, I'm pretty sure I didn't say nearly anything that was competently... Uh, understandable in this video uh, because I've, I'm just not used to commentating anymore because I haven't done it in a while but hopefully that will change in the coming future but anyway let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments down below uh, I'm gonna be testing more matchups with this deck and then more matchups with other decks uh, as well uh, specifically some rogue options I'm really enjoying playing blue eyes danger uh, a bunch of other uh, options as well and obviously Crusadia guard dragon is the deck that I mess around with the most right now things of that nature so Expect more video structure like this in the near future because I like to at least have content that at least appears to be polished and, and well thought out going up on the channel. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As I may have already said, uh, like, comment, subscribe to all that nonsense that you usually do. I'd love to welcome you on board if you are new here, and I'd love to tell you to go look at other stuff on the channel and see if there's anything that catches your fancy. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I will see you in the next video.